Good evening and welcome to Roberts Centre for our last match for tonight. It's a quarter final between Eklund Kachi and Mika Imnen for a place in tomorrow's semi final of the 2022 Fargo Race sponsored US Pro Billiard Series Ohio Open. Who will join Dennis Grabe already in the semis? Well, let's find out. The game is 10 ball, two races to four. Call shot and calling the shots with me in the booth this time is Tim De Reuter. Hi, Tim. Hi, Mark. Well, there's been so much drama here tonight. We've had a, a record-breaking shootout, which we'll tell you about a little bit later. M imminent breaks off rack number one. How's the break looking, Tim? Well, came up dry and has left a nice starter on the one. Looks like not a bad break, actually. Hit it quite good, a little bit, not straight in the face, but had a lot of balls moving to a good direction. Yeah, but you on. still got to make one. Yep. Imminent's loss there is Catchy's gain. Nice starter on the one ball here. Yeah, Imminent who put Fedor Gorst to the loser side earlier this morning. And here Eklund Kachi who played brilliant earlier today on the TV table too, so shows that both oh. players are ready for a battle. How well has he hit that ball there, Tim? Watch this for a beautiful stroke. Look at the top spin on that cue ball. Perfect on the two ball for position on the three. Any problems, Tim? I can't see any. No, no, not really. Just make sure you stay in line. Don't give yourself like straight shots or too much angle like try to stay like decent on everything yeah lots of noise here in roberts arena we have 140 teams taking part in the bca ohio state championships here it's crazy so one rail to the center of the table See Roberto Gomez in the background. He's up against Holland's Jan van Lierop. And also Fedor Gorst is playing against Ruiz Sanchez, the US Open champion. So just Ooh, two rails for the okay. five. Perfect. Yeah, not, not crazy much he has to do here. Just make sure he has a small angle on the six so he can draw back from the rail. Back to the center of the table for the seven. Eight and a nine in the same bottom right corner pocket. We know Mika is playing well, played well on here, as you said earlier, to send Gorse to the one loss side. But he really is up against it here in Kachu, I think has just come in real top form, Tim. The further he's come through this tournament, didn't start off too great, but he's certainly firing now. Looking from this angle, he might have a little bit more angle than I expected him to do so he might have to go three rails which were which really would work great as he would have a nice angle to keep continuing around the table on the six so three rails here yeah good call nicely on the six still some work to do though this isn't over yet will he come between the eight and the nine tim and back out or is he going to hold it yeah i like that just Right spin, he's not going to come all the way back to the left side of the table, just bounce real soft on the right side like this. Make sure you're not, you're not queuing over the eight or the nine. Did nice there, a nice angle too, just needs a little stun left. Back to the center of the table. Yeah, these players hoping for a place in the final, well, ultimately and hopefully to win it. 25,000 to the winner, 15 to the runner up. on the eight. Yeah, looking very comfortable around the table. This young man right here. from Albania 
who will be opening his own pool hall called Predator in his hometown sometime in November. In it goes, opens up his account and a perfect chance for us to thank our sponsors for all that prize money they're giving us. Kamui, of course, Alpha Coin, Medaya Light, Seabirch, Billiard Supplies, all you need to sort yourselves out with t-shirts, tips, cues, tables, chalk, anything you can think of pool related, get from seabirds.com and of course CSI and Predator cues and jam up apparel. Referee John Lehman there as we see Mika just having a bit of a wipe down, getting ready, trying to stay calm. There you see the packed room in the background. Catchy then to break off one up race to four and it's winner break yeah expecting a monster break he usually likes to crush the balls he is breaking from the side rail though which earlier I remember him breaking from the table and having quite good results so time for change well nothing down yeah, and I felt like he was holding back a little bit on this break. He wasn't going full mode, full blast on this. You see, like, it was not really explosive also body language-wise. It was quite controlled, which is nice if you make a ball. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a... Well, it doesn't look too bad, I guess. All the balls are makeable into one or more pockets, so... It's all about the one ball. Can he roll this in and get shape on the two? Yeah. Big shot here for me, Criminal. Oh, good shot. Hit that good. The only thing I was going to say is don't get too straight on the two ball because you really need to get off the rail for the three. And he knows. He was. He gave me that confirmation. Yeah, <laughs> he struck it so well. And you've got to say it's just a little bit unfortunate. It's hard to judge that pace completely right. Off the rail as well, digging down. But he can just draw this back, Tim, can't he? And just give himself a shot at the three. Oh, then he might have to use a couple of rails to get back on the four. That's the tricky part. I do like to go back a little bit. Stun draw. 30 he's second shot clock. Oh, he's, he's decided forward. to go forwards. Yeah, the thing well. was, I was thinking about it, but I don't... Well, the three might go in the left bottom corner in this view. Yeah, I think it does. Which would guaranteed be shape for the four. But he might push the five ball in a bad position too. So has to watch. Can't play it with too much speed because he could push the five together with the seven and then he's not able to run out no more. Yeah, you see, this is what I meant. Yeah. This is exactly what I meant. And like now he's like, oh, how did that happen? But he could have really played it soft and floated in and pushed it a little bit. Has over. he got an angle to draw short side on the five? Looks Into straight. The bottom left hand corner. Looks straight to me. We'll soon oh, see. Big stroke he's got me criminal. Let's see what he can do. He's playing. Oh, he was trying to go in between the eight and the seven and then play the safety on the five. And oh, he's, he's dropping down edge. real fast. Like, take your time, bud. It would be nice to not leave a little edge on the five. I think he's left a small piece. Kankachi, 2021 10 ball champion. Lost his title to Wojtek Shevchek last year in Vegas, or this year rather, earlier this year. I forget what year it is, never mind what day it is. Yeah, already has won the World Championship 10 ball and <laughs> got into another final. I mean, I said it before in a match, if this young man if he really commits to something, he will get close or does it. Like I've seen him on some tournaments to where he wasn't really fully committed to what's going on. Of course, he's got other stuff going on with his new pool room and everything. So I understand that playing pool is not just his only thing at the moment. But I have seen him like at the US Open and he was, he was ready to do something. And the same here. And we might see him do sp something special in Puerto Rico. Could he kick this from behind and kick and stick, Tim? Send the five round, keep him behind the nine? Well, Is that possible? 
I am not sure if he's going to kick it around. If I would p kick this, I would probably just kick the five ball to the other long rail. That way you can control the cue ball a little better. Used his extension, 30 seconds. Any info you want, guys, go to probilliardseries.com. It will give you all the info you need on tournaments coming up, where you can watch the brackets, everything you need. Oh, look at this for a shot, Tim. Well, is there going to be the gap? No. Not the right edge of it anyway. But this is a very makeable jump. Yes, you did. No extension, says referee John Lehman. You've already used it, Mika. You can only have one per rack. Well, he's dropped his extension there. I just realized what you said then. <laughs> I wasn't expecting oh, you to be funny, too. a little kiss on the tan. Oh, he's dropping that as well. Look, he's chucking cues all around. He's got so much money, he's throwing them around. Oh, he put quite some draw on that. Didn't hit it too bad. And yeah, I could have had a nicer result on this six. Can he still cut this to the corner thin? No, he played safe. And it came up way too short to get behind the nine and the seven. That's a little bit careless, that. I mean... He's left Eklund a chance here. Well, I cannot at least he should have got the cue ball on the rail, right? I just cannot believe, too, that he was feeling so rushed. Like, he starts running, and, like, he still had, like, 20 seconds to play that safety. Well, we do funny things, don't we, under pressure? And there is a lot of pressure here, and I know this would mean so much to Mika if he could make it through to tomorrow. He's been very close before. Yeah, he's been pushing himself a lot lately. Like, for a couple of years, same thing. He wasn't that motivated. He was really just looking for different challenges. And now, like, he's really focused on finally winning an event again. And he would really love to win one of the Pro Beard Series events. That's what he told me. Yeah, both players starting to rush a little bit. You can see in their body language. He's playing the bank into the opposite side pocket. It's there, and he's nicely on the nine. Yeah, strong shot. And now probably one rail forward. Lands nicely on the nine in the side. Looking to level things, uh, sorry, to go 2-0 up. Oh, don't go too close to the 10 ball. No, he's okay. Gorston Sanchez are 1-1 one, one in their first set. Yeah, and 2-0 for Kachi. So let's have a few predictions then, Tim. I mean, we've got two semi-finals tomorrow. First one at 10 a.m., the second one at noon. And then our final will be at 3 p.m. I mean, my prediction is Kachi against Gomez and Sanchez against Grabet. What do you reckon? Um, you said Sanchez and Grabet, right? Yep, Grabet is already through, so it's either Gorst or Sanchez to join him in the semi-final. Yeah, I, was, I was quite shocked by Federer's performance earlier today. He wasn't playing his best, so... From what I have seen, Sanchez, I mean, we know he's the hottest player on the earth right now. And then besides that, he's still still playing pretty good. Like, he wasn't strong earlier today, but I know he'll catch up. So I think that one is correct. Now the other side. Your country, man. Jan van Leeuw might be the underdog in that match against Roberto. But he's also beaten quite some good players on the road. So... Why not really go all the way? Okay. There you go. That's our choices. Watch yours, guys. 
did make the two ball going round four rails. No shot on the one though. Do you push Tim or kick this? There is a kick, yeah, you're going off the short rail with draw, kicking the one ball back up table, and leaving the cue ball behind the eight seven. It's not not super tough. I would really like this is quite doable. Possible scratch off the back of it, or is it far enough away? Well, I would always go to at least his, hit the left side. He's pushing, I think. Yeah, he's pushing to where now it's even easier. Now there's less of a scratch, too. Yeah. And it's easier to hit it more full in the face. Well, he's going for the jump here. Mika's going airborne. Oh, Thin air. Oh, I like it. I mean, it's a small edge jump over the eight and the seven, so it's not really a very high jump on this. I just think it's always harder when the object ball is nearer to the ball you're trying to jump over than the, it is to the white. Oh, oh not to Mika Eminen. What a shot that was. He even pocketed the extension as well. Yeah, nice shot and great position on the three ball. Yeah, needs to get a game on the board, Mika, to settle down himself. And also, just in general, like, I'm, I have seen Kachi play too well today to yeah, start playing well at a later stage of this match. Yeah, he's just overhit this position to the four, so he's going to have to do a little bit more work. Yeah, I think he might be just okay to float into the nine, leave the cue ball right where the nine ball is. He could draw around the eight and the seven, but that's if he wants to make everything very difficult. Okay, nicely done. But he's not done yet. Six ball, probably into the right center pocket. Oh, to go don't back. go behind it. Oh, what a mistake, Mika. He had so much room to get into there. And to finish behind that ball is a little bit careless, I think. Am I being too cruel? No, I'm actually surprised that he went backwards because it's more risk. If he went forward for the six in the side, there's nothing, that, like there was not much that could go wrong. And Good solid hit as oh. he got safe behind the seven, eight. He it's might above. have. He might have. No, nope. he hasn't. Well, he's got safe, but he's left oh. an easy safe for Catchy now. There's one thing I would do is I would call the six ball in the top right corner in this view and bang the cue ball behind the eight seven. In case you make the six, you have shape on the seven. And then in case you don't, you found the cover. Well played it. Quite soft. Played it perfectly. Another jump maybe for Imminent. Yeah, this one is tricky though because the cue ball is nicely on the rail. So it's tough to bring the cue ball all the way back up table. Might have to jump with a little top spin. Oh, <laughs> what you mean just but like that? It? But yeah, well the thing is he did stun the cue ball too much though. But he played play position for another jump, Tim. Yeah, just like I said, not enough topspin, unfortunately. Great jump. He did great, just yeah, possibly another jump. Yeah. He's going I, again. I was surprised that he put his jump cue away because yeah, I was. if I, if you make the six, then I'll, I'll jump the seven too. And he might even nudge the eight on as well here to the left-hand corner. Here we go again. Overcut it. Has he had a result here? Has he had a bit of luck? No, he hasn't. It's on for Catchy. Chance for Catchy to get on the hill in this first set. Roberta Gomez, one up against Jan van Lierop. Gorst, two one up on Sanchez. Here, 
Tough shot, though. Oh, how well he struck that! Very clean. Held also, it if you if you look at the speed he hit that, he really maximized his stroke. That straight and no power at all was just fluent. Yeah, struck that really nice. Yeah, nice little angle on the eight as well. Can go anywhere he wants. He can come around two rails backwards. He can go forwards two rails. I like coming back. Yeah. Oh, he just went one route. Just straight up for the nine in the top left corner. Just a little bit of an angle. Yeah. He, can he still draw it? To I the think side? he can still play low right. Can hold a cue ball. And if he doesn't like it, he can go up and down for the ten in the right center pocket. See, just double speed. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah, he's striking the ball good, and like I said, Mika is not taking all of his opportunities, and this young man has been striking the ball really good today, so tough to beat him. Yeah, in it goes. It is going to be tough for Mika. Mika's got to play his top game, and we'll be back to see if he can after the break. And we're back just in time to see uh, Eklund Kachi breaking on the hill. He's been very, very impressive in these first three racks. He has. Mika's had a couple of chances. That's a big break. Put a bit more into that one, Tim. And he's made a ball. He's made two balls. If this tool, two drops as well, it does. Yeah, and it's really how I've seen him break before. And I was so surprised to see him break from the side earlier because this, he's been crushing him. This is amazing. And players have seemed scared to break from the centre, and I don't know why. If you give it a good, a really good stroke, get that cue ball a little bit airborne. He's playing the, playing the one off the four, is he, in the side? Well, the four is definitely making the pocket bigger, but he can also make it direct, of course. So it, it's too... It's good, he's doubling his percentages. And look where the, look where the three is as well, yeah, if Tim. He, if he makes this, I favour him too. Finish the set. Nice stun here. Boom. Oh, oh, he caught the point. He forced it. Well, it's gone in the wrong hole. It doesn't matter. Well, it's now or never for Mika. For this set. Oh, if now he'd have just clipped that four ball, it would have gone in, wouldn't it? Or a little bit more out. Just. Oh, he can't believe it. I can't believe it. Excellent either. Unlucky, mate. Yeah, Mika now needs to get going. Known as the Iceman, he can't afford to melt now. Very, very noisy in here. I like to call it a very, very good atmosphere. Oh, yeah, I mean, we've had packed arenas. We had just with that crazy shootout we just had, you were going to tell the viewers. Oh, yes. It was so packed up there. There was usually there's a walkway. There was no walkway. And all the players with every single player left in the tournament, Tim, was there as well, all crowded around watching. And they were all giving them both a standing ovation at the end as well. Justin Martin 
from the US against Yang Van Lierop. They beat the all-time record. It was Nokioi against Jesus Asensio, 14-13. This one went 15-14. And it was absolutely incredible. Sad to see someone lose, but of course they had to. Imminent. Looking like he's going to get his first rack on the scoreboard here. Nicely on the 10 ball. He's not finished yet. No, he's not giving up. He wants his just as bad as the other players that are still in it. 3-1 yeah. and battling. Player of the decade, Tim, 2000-2010. Hall of Famer. He's won every single title you can imagine. Done so much for Paul in Finland as well. We've seen young Riku Rompanen this week here. We've seen Petri Makanen playing well. We've seen Jani Uski. It's a name but three. And there's others also on their way up. Finland, Paul, is still very much alive. And Mika is still very much alive. That man on your screens now, Eklund Katji, the stare up of someone who is fully focused on winning another title. Can this man stop him? Mika to break. 3-1 down, looking to stay in the first set. Big break. Made the wing ball team in the side. Yeah, it was a good break. Shot and, on the one. And got a nice result, but that six ball, what did that six ball do? That's what I wonder. Here we see again, put a long enough stroke on there to get the cue ball at least past the side pocket. That's the, bear, that's the minimum for me. If I want to crush him, I don't want to go straight to the side. I want to at least get past it and then curve to the long rail. That, that's okay. And well, he's yeah, going to play the combo here. Oh, doesn't want to get behind whoa, the point. Whoa, doesn't want to get whoa. behind the point. Oh, <laughs> no, I think he got behind the point. You sounded like a little girl then. <laughs> wow. We saw that. I don't know if you saw that the last match that Tim and uh, that, uh, Tony and I were commentating on. Exactly the same, but on the other side of the table. Dennis Grabe did it. Just playing the safety, very wise indeed. He's got cover behind the nine. Well, he has left the two six combo, so there's a big chance, Kachi. If he hits a two, there's a big opportunity to make the six. Are you saying go top rail where he's yeah, looking? Top rail, two rails possibly too. Because if he comes from that second rail, he's increasing even the chance to make the six. Makes it bigger, yeah? Yep. A little bit unfortunate to finish behind or near the point for Mika, where he couldn't make the combo. Roberto Gomez, 2-1 up on Van Lierop. On the hill, Fedor Gorst against Sanchez Ruiz in their first set. He chose to go one rail into it and another mistake from Kachi. This was not so super tough. Kachi went the wrong way, tried to get the ball out, forgot his chalk. Yeah, so another chance for Mika, Mika. And the good thing as well is if he can run this out and have another good break, could be easily hill hill. Yeah, and I'd like to see Mika pick up the pace a little bit. Use that flair that he's got. Get the cue going. Start spinning the ball around the table like he does. Great to watch Tim when he does. Oh, not sure if he was trying to shoot the five ball in the same pocket, but it, I guess it works. I think he got a little hold of that a little bit too much. I think he wanted it in the side, to be honest. Still nice okay. and straight on the seven here. <coughs> B 
Big thanks again to our sponsors, Kamui, Alpha Coin, Medaya Light, Seabirds, CSI and Predator Qs, of course, and Jam Up Apparel. All their support goes to giving these big prizes. 25,000 to the winner, 15 to the runner-up, and I believe it's eight for losing semi-finalists. Paul is on its way up. So is Mika Imminent. 2-3. And we'll be breaking to go hill hill with Catchy. Yeah. Yeah, still that mistake Catchy made. Um, yeah, made on that, that, that kick. I think it was on really the table, yeah. yeah, really surprising because he's had such a big incoming angle to at least hit the two ball and he was not close so I'm wondering how he was so far off but I mean I guess it, it happens he missed the bank and then this and it's all about this break here yeah catchy had quite a good run at the US Open, I believe he got to the quarterfinals where he was beaten by Coping Chung, I think. Beat him, yes, he did. Coping Chung beat him. Oh, that's no, no good news for me, Kain. Well, not a bad break, but it was not square in the face, but still, he gave it his absolute best there. He can cut this one ball in. Just sensitive, though. If he wants to go around the two, he needs to really hold the cue ball because he could get behind the three and the five. I was wondering, could he actually go into the three and five, Tim, and open them up a little bit and stay on the two? Is that possible? Is the angle there? Maybe the little bit well, of low left? I'm low expecting left? him to get on the rail around a diamond and a half on the long rail, so he would run either little bit into the two or just the edge of the five three so it could be possible but would be scary for me to play oh he's gone all the way just around running into it might he even get him this way look little bump on the oh, five as well oh, it oh, couldn't oh. have gone better could it oh he took a big big gamble well there. Mika is laughing in his chair there he cannot believe it a raise of the eyebrows and mouths the word wow Wow, indeed, Mika. That was a real stroke of luck there from Fakachi. But he went for it, you know. He let the stroke out, took a chance, and got lucky. Yeah, sometimes you don't have to follow what the book says. Just instinct. Yeah, and sometimes in the heat of battle like this in a quarterfinal, you can go into that mode of, you know, you stacked on instinct, you've done all your practice, you'll just go in with how you feel at the moment. Ooh. Ooh. Steady on Eklund, don't get overconfident. Yeah, looks quite straight on the four. I'm not sure if he can float down for the five in the top center bucket in this view. <laughs> Oh, he has the tattoo perfection on his neck. Maybe he should have almost perfection for this particular match. Decided to draw back and take a little longer five ball, but makes it a lot easier to get position on the six ball. He can literally just draw back a few inches here, can't it? He is slowing down a little bit, though, if you look at his rhythm. He's like really trying to seal the deal here, and I like it. Looking good now for the first set. There it is, perfection. And you have to be very confident and very good if you're going to have that kind of tattoo. Must hurt there as well on the neck. I've got a few tattoos. I'd never have one on my neck. Yeah, looking 
quite solid. Can just roll up, use a short wheel and come back out for the eight. Nicely done, Roberto Gomez on the hill in the first set against Jan van Lierup, 3-1. Feder Gorst has taken the first set against the US Open champion, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Arguably, Tim, two of the top players in the game at the moment. Gorst and Sanchez Ruiz. I wonder will they be teaming up for Moscone? Yeah, nice. The two mistakes that she made were not enough to let Mika Imanen back in the set. Yeah, it was that huge stroke of luck when he made that. Uh, was it the one or the two? So the first set then to Eklund Kachi, and we'll be back with set two in two minutes. Welcome back to Robert Serena here in the lovely little town of Wilmington in Ohio. It's the Fargo rate sponsored US Pro Billiard Tour Ohio Open. Catchy won the first set and he'll break off in set number two. He's got one foot in tomorrow's semi-final for a place against either Roberto Gomez or Lee Van Lirop. He made the ball on the break, but again, not a nice start on the one. Of course, you can still see the one, but no opening shot. Well, look at that block of balls, the eight, the four, the five, sorry, the four. Or is he? And the three. I sounded like Joey Tate then. He might be cutting the one ball along the rail and getting in between the three and the four. Two-way shot again. Yeah, this goes, doesn't it, down this rail? Yeah, I kind of like it. Quite risky. So he's playing low in the cue ball, probably to run into the four from the back or getting in between the three and the four. Safety of mind option. Well, oh, has he I got there? I think he's I left this. Yeah, me too. 
and a four and a three four combo tim yeah yeah there you see there's a gap can mika get through it can play a nice stroke on this play low on the cue ball draw it over just like that don't draw oh. in off though oh he's going to be absolutely gutted with that well oh you've got a feel for him struck it so well such a difficult shot too and almost the point almost saved him but to be very careful there and he has left himself an angle as well on this three ball things going horribly wrong for Mika at the moment you've got a feel for him so top spin to the short side of five or is he going no he wasn't going to the left side of five he decided to get as straight as possible and this is quite impressive because this is ball and hand shape right here he struck form just at the right time and they say that's what champions do they just get better and better as the tournament goes on and they play their best in the semis and the final it looks like that's what could be happening here Oh, wow, that was a snatch. That was a horrible stroke there from Catchy. Catchy got snatchy. Commentator's curse. Found the right form, Grunk. <laughs> yeah, very unexpected. I thought he was just going to draw softly for the six in the left side pocket. And, oh, maybe. Well, Mika must be thinking, right, come on. Let's get ahead in this second set. Yeah, cutting this to the side. Could also choose to shoot it in the corner, but he's going this way. Bump on the seven. He's normally very, very good at cue ball control. Just hasn't had a lot too much time at the table, really. When he has, it's gone wrong. Just a little bit of bad run here and there. This is a little bit in between the two. I think he was a little bit scared of drawing into the side pocket again. He looked a little bit wary on that stroke, just let up a bit. Oh, I don't like it into that pocket. Yeah, he can play top spin around the eight. He could do that. It's either shoot it to the right with top spin, go one, two rails out or shoot the seven in the left yeah, corner like and draw the kill. Could be both ways. I could understand why he would want to shoot it in the right corner because it has less angle. Yeah. So that would feel a little bit more comfortable for a player. Oh boy. Oh dear. Oh. Yeah, frustration showing. Yeah, he's just disgusted. That's understandable. Oh. It's just feels like he's striking the ball well, but just losing the cue ball a bit here and there. And that's the only reason why he's missing the shots is just because he's, yeah, he's losing the cue ball. Like he gets a little short here and then a little long here. And if you keep doing that, you're going to miss eventually. And he's left a little piece of it as well. And that's all Eklund needs. It's not just losing the rack, it's losing the break as well. So it can sometimes mean two racks, Tim, can't it? At least on a winner breaks format. So three rails here, stun right. 
Might have hit it a little firm. Just going to slide. No, stop just in time. Perfect angle to go for the 10 ball in the left side pocket to take another lead. Taking the first game in the second set. Like I said, he hasn't really been doing much wrong <laughs> so far. He's missed one bank and one, one kick shot. Besides that, it's been quite okay. Well, it's getting a little bit cold in this arena, so let's talk about somewhere a little bit warmer. Let's talk about Puerto Rico, shall we? 14th of November. We've got so much going on there, guys. We have the World 8-Ball Championships. We have the Under-19, Under-17 World 8-Ball Championships. We also have the Puerto Rico US Pro Billiard Series Open and also the Ladies US Pro Billiard Series Open. And we're going to have two stream tables for you there, and you're going to see a bit of everything. You're going to see the ladies, the gentlemen, and the children. You're going to see them all. So, excellent catchy. Eyes on the prize. First goal, make a ball. Mika sitting in his chair there having a little chat. You just want to go up and give him a big hug and say, come on, Mika, it'll be all right. Keep going. Don't give up. Oh, huge break. Just look at it. Huge. Okay, ha didn't stop the kill off perfectly where it landed at some point, but I mean, what more can you do against this? So I mean, that's just... Well, look at the one, the two, the three. Well, all of them, they're all linked, aren't they, in one way or another, Tim? Look, even the five, the six, the, the three, the four, the two, the, it's just all open, isn't it? Yeah, I would say getting nicely on the five ball, that would be the biggest struggle there is, if you can call it a struggle. There's Albin Ocean. Little Riku Rompanen sent him to the one lost side. What do you do when you get knocked out of a tournament, Tim? What's your... What's my... But what's, your, what's your kind of feeling? Do you think, right, OK, that's it. There's another one coming up soon, which there is plenty of them now, of course. Oh, I like to not evaluate my game during the tournament. That's what I'm trying at the moment. Not to think too much after every match, like... Oh, this was not good. I got to work on this, got to work on this. Just accept how it's going. And then whenever the event is done, now you can start building a better you. Now you can start like, OK, might want to hit some balls here or there just to figure out why I missed this couple shots or missed this position or didn't feel the table or the slide or kicking, except, yeah. Etc. So Etc. Et so enjoy the rest of the tournament. Have a go out for a nice food and have a few drinks. And yeah, a and bit then of the fun. day after you'll be like, okay, let's see. In this match, I felt this, and this match, and that, that's how you build. Mm -hmm. Because you could. Oh, he's overdone this. Oh. He's overdone it. Maybe. Well, I don't know why he didn't just hold it where it was. Why did he try and get perfect on it? Yeah, he could have left an angle to play for the six in the side. It's a little well, you better make up your mind quick. Whatever you're going to do. Oh, he's just going to play a little safety. What? A no, he has to jump. He's going to get the there jump. There's no safety. He's going to get the jump. Well, he if you don't, if like let's say he couldn't reach this, he can shoot the five ball of the eight in the corner. Oh, he's but a big he's fella. Don't tip the table over. Six seven. <laughs> big guy. Six foot seven. Full of muscle, full oh. of talent as well. Great shot. Yeah, rightly so. Nice little round of applause. Mika will be fearing the worst. Van Leerop has pulled a rack back. Now 3 2 Gomez. Mm. 
Yeah, nice, nice shot on the six ball and just needs to play some top spin to go one rail, land softly on the second rail. Just like this. If he gets straight, he'll draw back for the 10 in the right side pocket. If he has a little angle, he could stun off the rail and have the tempo in the top right corner pocket on this view. Overdone it a little bit, but no problem. 10 in the side. For 2 0. And things beginning to look a little bit dull for the Iceman. Let's just nip away for a quick minute, Tim, and we'll come back with the rest of this set. And we're back again here in Ohio. This is our last match of the night. By the end of tonight, we will know our semi-finalists for tomorrow. Looks like it might be catchy, but you never know. Feder Gorst on an outer table has taken the first set as well against Sanchez Ruiz in the big, you've got to say the big match of the round. Look at this for a break. Please tell me you're impressed, Tim. Well, he's lost the cue ball a little bit. <laughs> no, I mean, besides it, like I told you, as long as you get past that side pocket and it curves to the long rail, it's still quite good. Yeah, I mean, I feel Mika right now. and There's not, not much he can do. The guy's breaking well, playing well, running out from everywhere. Hasn't made too many mistakes. Maybe one or two bad safeties. What, missed one bank and one kick he's missed in eight yeah, games and the scratch in the side oh you're talking about catchy yeah catchy, oh yeah. sorry sorry yeah so like tough to be the guy that plays like this it's just tough you have to play your absolute best game to play guys like this and beat them is he gonna run around the back of the three is he gonna play us with right spin and go in between the three and the four all the way up to maybe the nine ball just like that. Ah, oh, this is what a great strong. If he bumps shot. at eight, oh, and he opened up the eight too. Well, things are oh. really working out to him. I mean, played that with loads of English, didn't he, Tim? Loads of left, uh, sorry, right hand English. Straightened it off that route. Got yeah, a nice little bump. That eight ball wasn't going, so he also opened up the eight. I'm sure he wasn't trying to do it, but he won't complain. Yeah, this is probably key shot now. Just slightly awkward queuing. Referee John Lehman come to have a quick, closer look. Oh, how well has he struck that? Really on fire at the moment. The man from Albania. One foot the semi-final yeah, Mika will be disappointed because he just hasn't really got going has he Tim in this quarter-final well and I called it a little bit in the beginning that if he was not gonna grab his opportunities from the beginning Kachi was going to run away with the whole match because I seen him play before and he, he is feeling good you can just look see, Look at him and he's like focused and relaxed and like he's executing well. So 
especially if you then give the guy the confirmation that you're struggling. Oh, look at that as well. He's hitting the ball so sweet now, stroking it around, yes. putting the cue ball on an absolute dime, exactly where he wants it. Stop shot on the eight. To cross to the other side of the table on this nine, and then he's already on the hill. Didn't take him too long. I don't think we're going to get a chance to keep you updated on the other scores, guys. You're going to have to go to QScore or ProBilliardSeries.com. Make your choice. In it goes. 3-0. Eklund, catchy. Yeah, I did say earlier on, Tim, that it was the junior's eight ball, but it's junior nine ball. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Mika laughing it off. He's finding the... the you know, the good side to it. I mean, he's had another good tournament. Shame again, though, just falling short. I believe he did make one semi-final before. I think Wisconsin. <coughs> Could possibly be. I mean, I'm just happy to see that he's still out there competing, wanting to get the results in the US Pro Beard Series Tour. And, like, he's consistently getting to the single elimination phase, now it's quarterfinal. So eventually it's going to happen. That's it, what you, if he will. keeps putting in the same time, in the same effort. I know I use this line a lot, but I always say class is permanent, form is temporary, and he'll be back for the next one. A huge monster break, and that has been a big difference as well. I think Catchy's broke better than anyone I've seen on this table this, this week. Yeah, but I'm not sure if he has... He has lost the cue ball here, though. Like, he needs to stop using that much spin. <laughs> but I'm not sure if he has that one ball. Is it six blocking a piece of the one? Seems to be shooting at it. Oh. He's got a piece of it. He's thinking of going around it with, low, with left. So, yeah, with l especially with left. If you can make a mini messe on this with the left spin, and you can go two rails for a longer two ball. Bucket speed, too. Well, he's, clo he's played close to perfection if, tonight. If he doesn't like it, he could push to the six and the seven and leave a jump. Then he has the option. He could jump into a safety behind the ten or jump to attack. That's up to him. Push out cold. Why did he push the five to that rail, Tim, do you think? Any reason or just so that he could get the cue ball where he wanted? No, no relevance to the where he pushed the five or not? Can you see anything? I don't really think so. No. I think that was just the speed to where, like, I'm sure he plays the cue ball in some kind of shot he wants to. There is a two rail kick with a big chance to get behind the ten. Yeah, I think he's given this back because he's hoping, maybe, that Eklund will be fought or tempted into the jump, but he won't be. He's going to play this two rails, try and stick it behind, cue ball behind the tent, and send that one ball, as Tony Robles would say, downtown. Well, almost got there if he had missed the eight, but... These are the types of chances that Mika needs to start taking now. He can play a good stroke on this one ball. Maybe take the cue ball around four rails. Can he miss the four ball, though, Tim, on the side rail, do you think? Yeah, he could use some left spin on this to get to the center of the table. He decided to run into the four on purpose. Good speed. Tricky little shot now on the two. Yeah, and 
and he's overrun the cue ball here. Just trying to get on the three to the bottom left corner in this view. But still has the opportunity. He can still go for it, but just left himself a little more angle. He needs to stun off that right rail back to the center of the table. Sanchez now 2-0 up in the second set, but he lost the first one against Fedor Gorst. Gomez one set up, Van Leerop one up in the second set. This is good stuff now from Mika. Yeah, left himself a little more angle, but can still play with some left, twisting the five ball in. Nicely played, pushed it in. Yeah, this is looking like a repeat from <laughs> set number one. Kachi up 3-0, playing well, left something for Mika. Mika wins for two games and then makes a mistake. But can he make sure he doesn't make the mistake again in this second set? We've heard screams of joy from Mika in his last two rounds that he's won. I think if he can come back and win this one in a shootout, I think he might jump and touch the roof. We've even seen a bit of golfing from Mika today. <laughs> oh, look at this, look, spinning it over as well. The man can do it. Three one then to Eklund Kachi. Is there a comeback on the cards? Yeah. He's got a little bit of a spring in his step again, Mika. He's slumped in his chair at the beginning of that rack. He's feeling much better now. Yeah, and one of the other quarterfinals Roberto Gomez won his first set over Van Lierop. But the Dutchman is up in set number two, one zero. And Sanchez and Gors are about to go to a shootout as well. Sanchez up three zero in set number two. Fedor has survived a few of them. It's a big break. You don't win one of these. Eat. Wow, that is a big break for That's Mika. It. That's the only thing I'm asking for all the time. Why is it so tough? <laughs> uh, he's obviously seen the success that catchy has been having with it. And he's decided I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw the whole lemon and at it. You saw the way he was stretching and, you know, warming up. Before that break, arms behind the head, flexing the muscles. Oh, yeah, again, he's not like the rail was definitely not where he wanted to be on this, too. He wanted to be way more straight so he could draw just to the center of the table. And now he might be able to stun over for the three in the left side pocket, but everything is so, so nervy every time if you get those. Ugly angles. Yeah, didn't really play that with a lot of confidence. Well, and he might be, well, he might be good here. Just stunned to the center of the table. Well, we've seen some comebacks in pool over the years. Could this be another one? Oh, he's caught the nine. He's okay though. He tried to stun past it to leave the six into the side. He got into the cue ball too much. Oof. Scrape that in as well. He's not hitting them clean at the moment. He's a little bit out of position again here. Bit of right English on this just to swing it over between the eight and the ten. 
Ooh. Yeah, and there you go. That was the shot previous to that. It was the, well, it was two shots previous. Caught the nine ball when he was playing position number six, and then that's just stretching way too much, Mika. I think you've just played your last shot in this year's CSI Predator, Predator US Pro Billiard Series, Ohio Open. It will be Eklund Catchy who will be going through to tomorrow's semi-final. Well, he doesn't like this. Maybe Catchy took that seven ball a little bit quick as well. Yeah, he can either play with outside to go in between the 10 and the 9 for the 9 and the side, or with inside doing the same thing. Wasn't too big of a problem. Yeah, he's okay now. So it looks like Catchy will be playing either Lee, uh, Jan van Lierop or Roberto Gomez. And in it goes. Thank you so much, guys. A very disappointed Mika Imminent. We'll be back 10 a.m. tomorrow with our first semi-final and then noon and then the final at three. Tim De Reuter, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow, of course. I've been Mark White. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a great night.